sometimes it can be useful to basically work around the type system that we have in Rust. Uh, you know, because everything needs like a very, very uh, specific type. Um, let's give an example here. So let's say you have a function. Uh, function, let's just say like it's called double. So double it. Um, we're gonna take in a number and uh, let's just say this is gonna be u32 and we're gonna then return uh, the same type, u32, it's gonna be doubled. So now I just wanna take number and then plus number. Okay, very simple function, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's go ahead, we're gonna say let um, like my doubled equals uh, we'll do double it and like 15, 15. If I do that and we debug out uh, doubled, we would expect when I run this uh, to get the double number, 30, which we do. We see that right here. But what happens if I also want to do this to an F32, let's say? So I want to be able to pass in 15.0 F32. Well, this is going to yell at me because an F32 is not a U32. But hey, it, they're all numbers, right? Can I just have something that is a number? And the answer is yes and no. There's some caveats here to working with generics. So a generic would be saying, well, hey, instead of this like very concrete type here that actually exists, what if I register a generic? So by, D, you know, um, most people in the community like just a single letter. We start with T and then um, it just goes on from there. However, there's nothing starting you, stopping you from using multiple uh, letters together and actually creating your own words, essentially. It's kind of like variables. Um, okay, so we have this T now. T is, a, um, is like a type, but it's like a generic type because we don't know what it is. So I can replace this U32 with a T here and this U32 with a T. So I'm saying whatever this is, registering it here and going from here. Okay, so if I try this, we're actually gonna get an error here. And if I hover over what this area is, it says, hey, we cannot add type of generic T to T. We need to restrict that. And that's because Rust is saying, hey, T, like there's a lot of potential types that T could be. And uh, we can't like not all of them can be added together in this way. Hey, we should probably implement standard ops add. Okay, so let's just copy this and throw this in here. Well, how do I restrict this? Well, we, what we can do is we can have just a colon and where like you would almost give a type to the, you know, to the generic. This is really just a restriction. We're just saying, hey, this trait add is is what t has to implement itself so um numbers definitely add the add have the add trait uh and then this one is like itself uh add has a little bit of a, a trait restriction on it where which we're saying hey the output of add must be the same type here it can't be something like completely different so if i do that um, then we seem to be fine, except we still have another error. Uh, use of moved value here. Okay, well, it's saying, hey, look, this uh, this number, we move it into here, we get ownership of it, but we can't like do it again. Um, it actually tells us we should probably have something that implements copy. Well, also something can't implement copy unless it also implements clone. So to further restrict this, to make it both add and copy and clone, we can do plus. So copy and clone. Now notice we have to pull in standard ops add here, but here we can just use copy and clone. That's because they're part of the prelude. They're, they're just like available to us all the time. Okay, let's save that and see if it makes us happy. Uh, it does, um, except now we need type annotations. Uh, cannot infer type for parameter, type parameter clone, declared on the function. Um, so. Oh, I did comma. I meant plus. Um, okay, so that makes things happy. 
let's run this and see what we get. Hey, and we get we get our 30 out here. Let's try this again, but with a different uh, number type. So we're going to double it instead of F32s. Now let's use like I32s. We're going to save it and suddenly it doesn't work. Uh, I32. Oh, uh, I can't do. Oh, dot zero. It would have to be that. OK, so now we do doubled again. And it just works. We got 30.0 and then 30. So this function is working for us um, with these generics, but there's stuff going on behind the scenes. Double it. There, there's not just one double it function. If we were to look at the assembly code for this, we would see that there's actually two double it's now. Uh, the Rust compiler looks through the code and it sees, hey, we're calling double it with two different types here. So therefore, we need two double it's, one for the F32 type and one for the I32 type. And so it creates that in the assembly. Um, this has some ramifications. I mean, in one side, it means that we only have to write one function here and we don't have to write double it twice, uh, which is great. But if we were to try to use a structure, let's say, so instead of something like double it, let's say that we try to have a struct, um, a struct, and maybe it's going to be just like a number wrapper. So we're just going to like hold numbers in here for some for some reason. Uh, and it's going to be like, hey, here's our data and we have our T here. Well, we're going to have to register the T. Uh, we're going to have to do the same thing that we did before. So T is uh, standard ops add, uh, which if we remember, there's the output. Um, output equals it's that same T. And then we also have to implement phone and copy. Okay, that's great. And that implements this T here. Um, so if I want to store this way, let's do uh, data is this T. So we're going to do uh, let um, maybe like an I32. So number one equals our number wrapper with data is like um, one U32. Okay, great, that works. That number uh, two wrapper data uh, two F32. What's happened just like that function, we now have two number wrapper structs that are being created behind the scenes when we compile this for runtime. That, um, it like here in this specific example, that's not really that big of a deal. But if I wanted to basically maybe have like a whole bunch of numbers together, so maybe not just like let's just do numbers and data is going to be a vec of t. And we want a whole bunch of different types together in a vector. Well, that's going to be a problem here. So let's um, let's take let our numbers equals numbers uh, of I have our data. It's going to be a vec at this point. Well, I mean, can I really put in two different types? Probably like 10 U32 and maybe like a 15.0 F32. This isn't going to work. We can't do this because each specific structure has to have only one specific type. And these are two separate types. So in the big project we're doing, uh, we have to have a vector of um, their own 
their own types, right? Like we have like one vector of like all one type, another vector of all its own type. Now that may be not exactly like this, but we would then have to potentially do like a TTT with like multiple vectors down here. So like other data is another vec of T. And then that would allow us to do other data a vec of uh, 10 dot, let's do like 15, wait, back like that, uh, 15 dot zero F32. And even then it's saying, look, it's expecting an F32. Well, what's happening here? It's because this T right here, this T, when it sees that U32, this T becomes a U32 essentially. It's saying, hey, this is a U32 that we're doing. So therefore I can't reuse this as suddenly some other type. So it's unfortunate, but what's creating is multiple numbers, which definitely means I can't store them essentially next to each other unless I create like another one of these. So what we can do like T, uh, I suppose we can then add in um, like S, which does the exact same thing. Uh, where this is now an S and now you're an S here. But the problem that we've run into is now I need to know exactly how many of these types that we're going to be using uh, and then set that up. Sometimes that's something that we can do. Uh, and in this case, only one struct is going to be created for each of these types. But if I have an unknown number of things that I want to store and I want to do something like a vector of vectors, that's not going to be possible. We're not going to be able to do that with generics. So it's important to realize that uh, the, the power of generics is that it creates one thing. So structure, function, enum, whatever we're creating that has the generics, one of them for each type that we're using. And as long as we, they're like separate entities and they don't need to like store data next to each other, um, then we're fine. That That's great and generics are, are perfect for that. If however, we're trying to do something like this and have like an unknown number of things sort of like stored with each other, we should probably turn towards something called dynamic dispatch and uh, and deal with types at a different point in the compilation system. Um, let's talk about uh, where to do the type the typings here, because there's um, there's a couple different like ways that we can have functions that like work with generics. So let's have our our um, let's use type ID. Because like the type ID can actually just print out type ID for us. Every single type has its own ID. Uh, let's do let's just create a function that returns the type ID for us. So we'll do a uh, function get type ID. Um, and this is going to take any kind of generic. So we need to register that. So T um, and we're going to say like it has to be a trait, right? That's going to restrict it. Well, I'm just going to use the any trait. Um, and then we're just going to have a, well, we don't know. It's like something. So something and it's implements a T and we're going to return the type ID. Okay. So I should be able to do a type ID of this, uh, well, we can do this T, this something here, but I can actually, if we're taking this in here, I can just return something dot type ID. It knows that this is going to work because the trait any has this method type ID on it. So if I save that, that's okay. And we can now just do let type ID equals, let's do something like a uh, 15, U32, so the actual number 15 and then 
we'll pass that into get type ID. And then we'll just debug this out with the type ID. So if I run that, uh, it runs and we get this sort of hash type ID out of it. If we run this again, and we make you maybe not a U32, let's make this like an I32. Then we get a completely different type hashed out. Now, as we mentioned before, two completely different functions, get type ID, get created for this, and that's not a problem whatsoever. Now, let's say if I want to create the type ID, I don't actually need a specific type for this. Um, that's uh, th there's a different way of us passing like types around. So let's say I don't want to do it like this. I just want a function that doesn't take anything in and it returns this type ID. Well, what we can do is have type ID of, uh, and then use something called the TurboFish syntax, which is this colon colon with the uh, uh, open close greater than less than, and we can just put in the type, so in this case T, and parentheses. So that's running this here. This is happy. Uh, now get type isn't going to be this, we're not passing in anything like that anymore. Now we have to use the same TurboFish syntax here to pass in, hey, you're a U32. Notice I'm not creating a number as a U32 and passing it in. I'm actually create, passing in the actual type U32. So this can be an I32. And this still works. Um, now, these are like two different ways of essentially using generics. There's a generics is a full field. It's like there's a lot of really interesting things to do with it. And it's fully understandable that you can go actually quite a ways in Rust programming without having to pull out generics. Uh, so if this is something that is sort of like interesting, but I don't really need it right now, that's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it until it's something that you like need it. Generally speaking, when you start need, uh, when you start finding yourself writing duplicative code to handle different types, that's when you either pull out dynamic dispatch or generics or some combination of the both. So anyways, if this is like something you're not interested in, that's perfectly fine. And if it's something that you're just trying to force yourself to do, don't worry about it. You'll get to it eventually. Anyways, if we run this, everything should still work. All right, I will see you in the next video and have a good day. Bye.